Hello and welcome back, most illustrious and most <laughs> depressed members of the detail. Guys, gals, and then pals, monarchs of any all or no genders. We come together to mourn the loss of our boy, the Collector. They killed him. They killed him. We're going to talk about the changes that they could make to this card going forward that I, I hope they make. The changes to the cards surrounding him that caused this this horrible, horrible tragedy. Um, and, and the history of this card. Because if you didn't know, this isn't the first time that our boy has died for some other card sins. I hope that you enjoy. Just before we get into it, um, a big thank you to everyone who supports, as always. A big thank you to everyone who donates their time, money, or energy. Um, a big shout out to my wife for making me these cool avatars. My birthday's coming up. You can help uh, support the channel and support me for my birthday by uh, subscribing and commenting down below. Leave me a little happy birthday message to feed the algorithm. Thank you so much. All right. So if you don't know, Collector got nerfed uh, yesterday as of, as of recording. Uh, I don't know why I say <laughs> I don't know why I say days. Like it co the video comes out when it comes out. So um, he was a two two. He's now a two zero. We're actually gonna real quick go over the rest of the changes the ota changes and then we'll loop back because i think the collector is the one i really want to talk about the rest of them are are mostly good or bizarre uh so shadow king is a two three now instead of a three three with the exact same effect um they they reference here that like oh yeah like you know shuri and collector are are really good right now so shadow king's good um, you know, and you, oh, you have a, a new out. You don't just need Shang-Chi. And it's like, yeah, I, I agree with all this. Like, I think Shadow King is good as a 2-3. Like, you know, uh, this, this is the type of stat line a card like this needs to be playable. Is like, you know, it's just a vanilla card in, in situations where it's not going to win you the game. And like, it needs to be that. Um, additionally, I have another note. Hang on. Let me, let me put my hat on. <laughs> Let me put my hat on for this one. Um, it's that this card should goddamn be in pool too. A n there is a number of tech cards. Um, you know, they say, oh yeah, well, you know, now you have, you can diversify your Shang-Chi plays. Like, yeah, I, I fucking agree. Everyone should have access to this card. I, I talk about how Second Dinner actually does really good by giving you uh, answers before the relevant questions, right? So you get Shang-Chi and Enchantress, and then if you lose to Devil Dino, right, in pool two, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I keep losing to Devil Dino, I should pack Shang-Chi or Enchantress. And there's a bunch of stuff like that, wherein you get the tech card, like, you have Cosmo before you, before you ever have access to Wong, everyone has Cosmo, right? Stuff like that. It means that cards like this, that Shadow King, should fucking be in pool two, you cowards, give everyone access to the answers so that there's no feel bad moments where you're just like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess I, uh, can get fucked then. Huh? <laughs> like I had nothing to get to deal with that. That sucks. All right. So, uh, moving on, uh, lady Sif is now a three, five instead of a three, four with the same effect. Uh, this one's, this one's kind of strange to me. Cause like she's a targeted discard. She always discards your highest cost card. So like, she didn't like she sees play in the decks where you are targeting a specific high cost card and therefore like that her her use case she is a vanilla statted card with a use case that like you know affects a certain deck and you have to slightly build around it but like the reason that swordmaster and hellcow have extra stats is because they don't target a specific like axis of a card text, right? They don't say highest cost or lowest power or lowest cost or whatever, or leftmost or rightmost. So they have to have extra stats because you're just like, you're just throwing cards away to the, you're pissing t into the wind to get those extra stats. And you might just like not piss anything good. I don't know. That metaphor broke down. <laughs> but the point is like, I I'll take it. There's, there's no reason like, <laughs> There's no reason for it, but I'll I'll accept an extra point of power on Lady Sif. <laughs> totally fine. Um, Spider Ham, his effect has not been reverted. He's still now the leftmost card instead. He, he used to be Spider Ham hit the highest cost card. It's now the leftmost card. Um, but they've changed him back to a one cost, which is good. 
Like, you want to interact early and often in controlled style decks. Like, like the decks that Spider-Ham wants to go in, putting him at a one cost is just better in most situations. So, um, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Like, uh, totally fine. This one, uh, compl this change completely fucking incomprehensible. This change is f fucking eldritch to me. Black Cat is not a seven, a three seven anymore. With at the end of the, your turn, discard it. It's now a four nine. With at the end of your turn, discard it. And it's like the the rationale is perfectly logical. Basically, they're like, you're, no one ever plays Black Cat. Like physically, you don't play her. You play like um, Ghost Rider after you've discarded her. And so, like, if you're going to discard her. You might as well, and then like use Ghost Rider to play her. It might as well be a four nine, like so that she's just like it's just extra stats. Weirdly, this does open her up to Shang. I don't fully subscribe to that argument because it's like in Magic: The Gathering, people will say like, "Oh, well, it dies to removal." <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, fine, it dies to removal. It's like a weird thing. It it. Like, would it be better as a 4-8? I don't know. I guess technically you can now play her in Zabu decks. Like, you know, because if you Zabu on 2 and you draw her on 3, you can play her and you just get, like, a little bit of extra value. And you might play Ghost Rider in those shells anyway because Ghost Rider is a 4 cost. So, like, there's some logic, but this fucking change... This change just, like, broke me when I saw... I was like, why, why is this card... It doesn't matter. This change is completely incomprehensible, but also completely... It does not matter. All right, we're going to jump into the actual thing you probably came here for. So, I... <laughs> I love this card. I love this man. Look at that shit-eating grin. <laughs> look, at, look at him. Just smirking. Uh, that smile. It all started with that goddamn smile. <laughs> Um, I, I have loved this card since I started the game. It's, it is easily my favorite card. Um, you know, uh, on and off, Mr. Negative takes that spot sometimes, but consistently Collector and Bishop are my, my two absolute favorites. For what it's worth, the type of decks you can still play Collector in do favor, like, Collector Bishop, um, style play lines. But, but the, the problem as I see it is that that, is less fun in a, in a lot of ways. Like limiting this card to only being playable in decks where you can high roll him in one or two plays to being a 2-6 and then like a 2-11, you know, is not really where I wish this card was, but it's, it's the lived reality, right? It's the material reality which we inhabit that that must be the case. If you don't know, Collector used to be, I, I believe used to be a 2-2 two -two and got nerfed down to a 2-1. And that one was because they identified, second dinner identified that Dino decks were too good. And this was just the card that got chosen to be hit. Um, and then as power creep happens in games, it's totally natural. They were like, well, you know, the Dino decks aren't that popular anymore. And a lot of other cards are just outshining what Collector could be. Um, and buffed him up to a 2-2, and that was during my time playing the game. So, this is not the first time that this card has gotten nerfed because some other card was too good. And and let's not mince words. I mean, you saw the thumbnail. It's because of Loki. Like, this card broke Collector and, and did not apologize. <laughs> did not call him in the morning. Um, and and I, I'm frustrated with that because i you know loki is the current season pass card if there's a problem with it why why are they changing the other cards that like you know it isn't it maybe just that loki is like a problematic set of play patterns like is that is like are we not willing to engage with this idea second dinner that maybe like it's just not fun when your opponent has half your deck in their hand, but it all has reduced cost on turn three. Is that not something we're allowed to talk about? Like, wh why? <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, and then also, their collector got plus six. <laughs> like, the two costs that they played last turn, it's still a two six, like, in the Loki deck. You're still, like... Oh, fuck, how do I beat that? <laughs> but also, you can't play Collector in other decks anymore. <laughs> um, so it's really frustrating. I guess in, in the in the 
theme of not being a doomsayer because I really don't like just just complaining. I think that, you know, that's not always a great look and it's not the person I necessarily want to be. Um, what, what, you know, oh, D, you're so fucking smart. Offer a solution then. Okay, fine. Uh, straw man, I fucking will. Uh, collector should be a 2-2 that says when a card enters your hand from anywhere except your deck, plus one power, maximum twice per turn. And what that would do is it means that, you know, if you curve two into Agent Coulson on three, and then like on four, you're going like Mirage, Sentinel, and you're sort of doing like, you know, maybe you even just Moon Girl on four. Um, you know, you're putting in a lot of work to get that plus two per turn. Like you're putting in consistent sort of play patterns, but you also can't just high roll on turn six and be like, you know, or turn five Loki and then you get your opponent's Loki and turn six Loki and you're just like, all right, well, anyway, he was a 2-2 and now he's in 2-14. You fucking eat it. Eat my asshole, dickhead. Um, and I think that that would mean that you can you can put, keep Collector in a lot more decks that want to do a lot more, like, stuff like that. You know, you're still adding cards to hand. Snow Guard guarantees you the maximum plus two just on its own. It's still a reasonable play pattern in a lot of ways, but but you can play it in bounce decks and in Loki. Like, you would still play it in Loki decks. You would still play it in that fucking cool big hands deck, the discard, you know, because one discarding one swarm guarantees you the maximum collector bonus for that turn. All you have to do is hit your swarm, right? Like, all, all of those things feel more akin to what, what a well-designed card is, but I don't think that that's what they want out of this. Like, I think what they want is like clippable highlights where someone gets that, that 15 power collector off a bunch of Loki chains, <laughs> Loki parallel universe, Loki's daisy chaining each other. I'm salty. I'm salty and I'm not going to apologize for it. So that's it. That's, that's the whole video. Um, I'm, I'm not thrilled about it. I have to, I deleted a bunch of my decks. I got to delete more of them because that one still doesn't work. Um, for what it's worth, like I said, Collector and, and Bishop was my other like favorite card. And, you know, this card still works in a high roll bounce deck that Bishop would probably shine in. And so in that regard, like I'm still able to play these cards were I like to want to. But I, I wish that there was a more robust way of playing it. I wish that, again, like I talked about player agency in a recent video. This is another situation where I feel like I have lost a, a little slice of player agency. It has narrowed the viable patterns with which you may play this card. And, and I just, I just wish that weren't the case. Um, but it is. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, um, you should, you should probably subscribe, but like you probably are, as I always say, uh, any kind of like, comment, any of that goes a long way. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate anyone who just, like, is here watching my my non-animated PNG tuber say good game and congratulate everyone. Um, a special thank you to the following people. They make this channel run through their time, effort, or money, and very often all of the above. Uh, you're, you're really immensely, you know, helpful, and, and I am so appreciative i thank you so much they are as follows the tiny ruby a frog in a tent clips crayon eater cole d polly hayes satorius demisi kd Distin nelson and matt backy thank you all so much thank you for watching i hope that you all have a great day and i will see you very soon